Hi, my name is Diego Gonzalez and I'm from airbrushmonsters.com. Today we're actually going to go over how I built this Bane mask. Um, the first thing about this mask is I actually learned how to build it off of a tutorial there on YouTube. Uh, and then I modified it and tweaked it up a little bit using my skills as an airbrush artist. The first thing I want to go over is what this mask is built with. This mask is actually built on a foundation from a respirator. As you can see um, underneath, here is um, the basic parts and components of a respirator. And I pretty much cut off all the sides and the straps and the little pieces that I often, um, that are actually aren't um, like Bane's costume. I also use reference photos. Here are the reference photos that I use for this uh, costume. It's very important to really capture the likeness of the mask using photos, uh, reference photos, to kind of get as realistic as possible. Um, like I said before, I used uh, this other guy's tutorial on YouTube, and I'll post a link to his as well, which is very awesome. And then I said tweaked and modified it. And his, in his tutorial, we did um, we used straws. And I thought that was a really great idea, and I just kept it. I'm um, going to use straws for the front of the mask, as you can see, uh, little bendy straws. And the side, larger straws from, I think you went to like Speedway and got um, the Slurpee straws, the big uh, red ones, and then I just cut them down and used those for the sides. Um, also, um, I'm not really, this is my first tutorial, so please forgive me if I kind of forget something or leave something out. Um, also, what I did I used was um, a, an epoxy. I basically built an epoxy over this, at the top of the mask with epoxy clay. It's two parts, and you can get it from um, this uh, website online. I think it's called, um, I'm not sure exactly, I think it's Graves or something like that. All, oh, Aves, actually. Aves LLC, um, based out of Wisconsin. Um, you mix these two, uh, these two uh, epoxies together, and they actually make really nice moldable clay and you can actually mix the two clays together and once they mix they actually have about two hours before they really harden so that gives you enough time to kind of manipulate the kind of shapes that you want and do the intricate designs that you want to do um, this one is actually um, for me it was the opposite of the other um, guys tutorial the hardest part was actually the mask and the easiest part was kind of the straps in the back um, the hardest part because the mask is actually, um, as you can see, it has like a lot of small details, like these rivets and things like that. And one of my um, kind of like idols is Todd McFarlane, and it kind of uh, used some of like his techniques when he creates his McFarlane toys, and uh, created my own kind of uh, little indentures and rivets. And he uses a lot of those in a lot of his toys. If you ever, um, you know, had one of his toys before, you would uh, kind of like you know be familiar with that. Um, also, um, like I said, there's clay all around it, and once the clay hardens, um, you could actually um, throw a base coat on top of it. I used uh, automotive base coat because within my company, we do a lot of um, you know, automotive cars. Um, we do a lot of custom paint jobs in cars, um, and we use some quick primers for like baseball helmets, and one of them is actually two-in-one black primer. It's really nice because it lays down really smooth and has that kind of matte texture to it. It doesn't have a glossiness to it. And I think that matte is actually the more, is more realistic to the uh, mask. Um, and also I kept some of the components on there. Like on the sides right here, if you can see, has these little parts that are still part of the mask of the respirator. And I just kind of use my own uh, kind of interpretation of that because it's not exactly like the mask, but I believe if you keep a close representation of it and do your own interpretation, people will still kind of you know, respect that and uh, they'll like it. Um, I used um, a heat, um, I guess uh, a heating tool, uh, a lot used for basically um, uh, carving wood. And uh, I have different knobs and, uh, and shapes for it. And one of them, not this one in particular, but there's one that has like a, a small point to it and I kind of puncture that as I heat it up and created these little rivets to give it a more realistic texture to it. Um, this in particular um, P 
piece is a blade that he used to cut the side holes. These side holes right here kind of gave it the more realistic, you know, um, side holes from the mask in a movie. Um, like I said, this is kind of like an art project, and um, this isn't, you know, exact movie quality, but it's something that you can kind of build if you're kind of resourceful, and, uh, you know, you kind of have like an idea of how it looks and kind of build on top of that. Um, for me, building the foundation was um, the kind of the most the most difficult part. But once you got it going, you kind of you know added the smaller details and then refined it, and um, that's how it kind of kind of came as it is now. How how, how it kind of uh, became complete. So this is the main mask, like I said, and I actually used something on the side with the, of the respirator where they have um, the respirator kind of like filter units. I took off and cut those units that have this kind of molding in between. It's like kind of like a waffle. Uh, it's a hard plastic, and I cut it off the parts that I didn't use and glued it into the middle part right here. Using like, I think I use a super glue. I also, um, you know, super glue worked really well for me because it bonded this hard plastic to these other hard plastics. Um, also, I attached the side right here from this plastic, um, it's basically like a, a gutter piece, I found it at Menards, or you can find it at, you know, you kind of like your um, hardware store. And it was like a hard plastic, and I think it's for gutters or something like that, I'm not exactly sure, I'm not really handy with uh, tools and everything like that, but I was looking down one of the aisles and found this kind of like um, flat, I believe it is for gutters that keep uh, like a guard or something, and they're like three bucks or four bucks. And you know, I needed a hard piece of plastic that was kind of flexible though. It still had a, like a nice soft flexibility to it, um, but it was durable enough to use as, as a mask. Um, and like I said, you can put your own interpretation in it. You don't have to use these um, plastics. Uh, it's the same exact plastic. You can use something you know you think that would you know suit the mask well, and then you know kind of tailor that to your own um, ideas. Also, um, our company is AirbrushMonsters.com. So I use my experience as an airbrush artist to kind of render some of the details within the mask. And actually a lot of these components right here are hand painted. Um, because the hand, by hand painting it you can kind of get that textury look. Um, some of the bars on the side I actually airbrushed though because they're kind of a smoother um, kind of metallic look. And I actually used uh, Createx paint. Um, I think it's silver. Um, it's like a like a two-tone silver, and it looks actually really, I think it looks really well, uh, you know, really realistic, because that silver is uh, kind of has that like two-tone flake or two-tone like um, two-tone uh, kind of view in it, um, shape or whatever. Um, also, I kind of did the top right here too. I built um, this is a template. I kind of created my own template as I saw. I kind of eyeballed it um, because it was kind of a last-minute project. But if you want to, you can kind of you know, take your time and draw it out yourself and uh, maybe even download a template or uh, make your own. And honestly, making your own is the best way to do it, I believe, at least when you, I want to customize something. And I kind of created this one shape for the back of the mask and then it attaches to the front. Um, in the other video, he used some kind of uh, Velcro and I tried to use some kind of glue, but it kept on falling apart. And I, um, I found out that using a staple gun um, I think this is like kind of a, a vice or a clamp staple gun. I can staple the parts, attaching them to the mask, and it really holds very well. Um, and then when I'm finished, I'll staple this together, and then the components on the back, if you want to see the back right here. You can see all the um, different um, shapes too I made with clay. I basically molded clay into small little circles and then used an old technique I think I learned in high school on how to like kind of um, rub clay between your hands and then place the little parts on each, you know, each as like a different um, section and then kind of combine them together. And then once I did that, all the little small little small parts that I couldn't really blend well with my fingers, um, and uh, it recommends you use like latex gloves to do that. And it um, is a tool, I think this is for um, clay parts, but I'm not too sure. I think I found it in one of my old boxes, and I'm sure it's some kind of uh, tool for clay, though. But um, if anybody knows, uh, 
think if I post it on uh, on, a, uh, on a YouTube video and kind of give me a, an idea what this is because I'm kind of out of it. Um, but it's called Kemper Tools on, on this. Um, and I think this this, this thing right here, um, actually this, this um, wood carving tool, is actually very important because you can do a lot of little intricate details in, inside of the rubber and that kind of gives you an advantage to make it more realistic than um, someone else's mask who doesn't really have these tools if you want to kind of um, and make the best mask of, uh, out there, and uh, by far this isn't the best mask out there. This is kind of something I made uh, on the fly, but um, like I said, it kind of gives it some texture to it. So, um, what else? And I apologize again, like if I stutter or say like, you know, uh, oh, a lot. I say that a lot. I guess my brother makes fun of me because I do that all the time. Um, and I kept the, uh, unlike the other tutorial, I kept the components of the mask, like the straps, and I guess, I, and then I hide them behind this, uh, behind this rubbery, um, this rubber uh, side piece, and that's important, I think, because if you have the still, you still have the components of the mask, you can wear it very well, and uh, I use a lot of respirators in my um, business, with my business, painting cars and doing custom paint jobs on objects like skate decks and boards and things like that and um, the respirator really fits well and you can wear it and still be comfortable. Um, you can actually breathe out here pretty well too because underneath here I kind of left a gap open for these uh, as, as the flaps uh, are covering this part so that gives you you know, um, you know room to breathe and actually when you put it on it sounds really cool because you, know, you sound like Bane. Um, and if you ever wore a respirator, you kind of know it's like, it's very really muffled and you kind of have to really kind of have a deep, try to project that voice as deep and, uh, uh, as possible to kind of get that uh, um, across somebody like exactly what you're trying to say. Um, so like I said, I did all the little the parts in here and then I primed it black. And then on top of the black, I kind of took a paintbrush and hand painted in between the little rivets to give it more of a realistic texture and also airbrushed on top of these parts right here um, to kind of give it a smooth kind of finish like metal has. Uh, and you don't have to airbrush it if you don't have one. Uh, if, you, if you don't have airbrush it's fine. Um, you just build layers on top of that with uh, by hand and you can probably get a very close or um, you know accurate uh, depiction of it uh, doing so. Um, and here's a couple other uh, reference photos I used uh, for the side of the space. And then one kind of for the back um, but I didn't finish it like exactly like this because I didn't really have as much time as I wanted to. Um, uh, but the main one was the, just the face, the front face that I use a lot. So I think that pretty much covers it all. Um, I'm going to show you like, kind of like inside from a better view so you can see for yourself uh, if there's something in here that you know I put in there and didn't really mention. Um, I didn't really put anything inside, I don't think so, but I cut up a few like round pieces inside that kind of blocks uh, the breathing that, um, you know, so that when he does talk, um, I'm actually making this a um, mask of friends, so that's why I say he all the time. Um, when he does talk, um, you can see, you can actually uh, have a better, you know, you know, understanding what he's saying. So, and then like I said, these kind of uh, parts amount to the top like this, and um, I'm just going to staple them in here and kind of, uh, you know, heat them and mold them down, and then you can kind of take it on and off um, um, as you, you know, kind of, you know, just extract. Uh, these straps are kind of pretty flexible, so you should, uh, he won't have a problem with that. So that's my tutorial uh, on the vein mask. Um, I appreciate any comments you have, any uh, suggestions too. Um, I'm always looking for better ways to do stuff, and uh, you know, any kind of constructive criticism. So I appreciate you uh, checking this out, and uh, if you got a chance, check out uh, airbrushmonsters.com. We're a new company, and we're really doing a lot of uh, customized, uh, cool artwork out there. So just uh, check us out, guys. All right, thank you.